Hi, welcome to another session of ENT. I am your educator, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, and I have been teaching ENT for 18 years now. So this is my resume, very short. That 18 years is a very long time. I bring a lot, lot of experience. I have taught in almost all the institutes across the country. And in the last 18 years, I have also written three ENT books, as you can see in your on your screen. The first one in 2011, Dr. Agarwal's ENT. Second one in 2017, Review of ENT. And finally, the third one for MCI students last year, which is ENT for medical graduates, foreign medical graduates. Now, today's topic is uh, syndromes. So, we are doing a series of syndromes. And today, I am going to talk about anterior throat pain syndrome. You know what this is? You will see that when you start practicing ENT, lot of your patients will come very vague complain of pain on the head and neck area basically, throat area. Some will say the throat pain is here, some is here and they have done a lot of things and the pain does not go away, it remains and many of these pains are fleeting pain. They are uh, you know jumping from one area to the other area. Today the pain is here, yesterday, uh, tomorrow it starts here, third day it starts in the inside, the oral cavity. So it keeps shifting and the patient will tell you this kind of history. So what are the main features of this syndrome called anterior throat pain syndrome, which is a, you know, this entity is a broad entity. Under this heading, there are many subclasses that we are going to talk about. But like I told you, the main feature is that there is a pain in the head and neck area, throat, which is just not going away. So the main thing, three features are there, that they have endured multiple extensive, expensive diagnostic tests. Because they, you know, we, call, we use this term uh, hospital hopping or doctor hopping or hospital shopping. They keep going from one doctor to another doctor to one hospital to another hospital. Because like I said, that the pain is not going away and these people, they are scared. And so they go to different hospitals and they get every kind of investigation and somebody will get MRI done, somebody will do endoscopy, you know, whatever. So they get multiple extensive uh, diagnostic tests done. And for the same reason, they have received multiple type of treatment, including antibiotics. Obviously, every doctor is going to prescribe something, right? And more often than not, uh, they get a lot of antibiotics. And we all know antibiotics without any uh, clear-cut indication could be quite harmful also. But because the patient is so troubled because of the pain and the diagnosis has not been made, so they are like worried and they keep uh, hopping from doctor to doctor and get a lot of investigations, a lot of treatment done. And there is, like I said, there is no specific diagnosis. That's why this kind of a problem. There is no specific diagnosis. You can't pinpoint at the problem despite all the investigations and treatment. And so the pain persists. If you look at the last point, the pain persists despite all this. <clears throat> now I told you that under this entity called anterior throat pain syndrome, there are few names. In fact, there are five important syndromes. And so this comprises, like I told you, five disorders. One of them is Ernest syndrome. This one is an important one. So I'll tell you a little bit about this one. The second one is Eagles syndrome, also called Eagles disease. This is the most important name in the list and question MCQs from Eagles disease are very, very commonly asked. You know and perhaps you know about this, I'm sure. Then the next three are less important. If you just know the names, that's enough. We are not going to discuss all these three. One of them is called superior pharyngeal constrictor syndrome. As the name tells you, the three constrictors, superior constrictor, middle constrictor, inferior constrictor. So the area, pain is in the area of the superior constrictor muscle. So it's called superior pharyngeal constrictor because constrictors are pharyngeal muscles. So it's called superior pharyngeal constrictor syndrome. We are not going to discuss this. Just remember this point that in this patient, the pain is roughly in the area of the superior constrictor muscle. <clears throat> then higher bone syndrome. Again, we are not going to discuss, but again, higher bone, you know, the pain. And from the higher bone, the middle constrictor arises, right? So this is actually the pain in the area of the middle constrictor muscle because the middle constrictor originates from the higher bone and so the pain is referred to the higher area also 
and we call it a hyoid bone syndrome. We can call it middle constrictor syndrome. <clears throat> and the third is carotid artery syndrome. So in the area of the carotid artery in the side of the neck and roughly in the area of the inferior constrictor also. So last three, the last three if you look at it, the top one is area of the superior constrictor, hyoid is the area of the middle constrictor and carotid artery is roughly the area of the inferior constrictor. So they are dependent on the constrictor muscles, roughly the area. But the names are different, hyoid bone and carotid artery syndrome, right? So these three we are not going to do, but we are going to talk about Ernest syndrome and Eagle syndrome. Both are extremely important. So let's dwell on these two. We'll start with Eagle syndrome because this is the most important name in the list. Do you know this? I'm sure you do. What is it? Eagle's syndrome, also called Eagle's disease. It is enlarged styloid process. <clears throat> Simple. One line definition. Enlarged styloid process is Eagle's disease. We all know the styloid process arises from the skull base and it comes down and ends roughly deep to the uh, uh, tonsil, palatine tonsil. So where the palatine tonsil, if you just go deep lateral to the palatine tonsil, that is where the tip of the styloid process arises. And we all know from the styloid process, a lot of structures arise, muscles and ligament. One of the ligament, look at point two, is uh, <coughs> look at point three, stylohyoid ligament. So actually, this is due to calcification of this ligament called stylohyoid ligament, which goes from the styloid process of the hyoid bone. Now, calcification, calcium deposits on the ligament now calcium very much looks like a bone, bone is made up of calcium, yes or no? So on radiographs, this calcified area of the stylohyoid ligament appears like a bone. And that's why we use the term enlarged styloid process. So technically speaking, this is very important, technically speaking, there is no enlargement of the bone as such. The styloid process remains the normal size, the same size, it does not enlarge. Only at the tip of the styloid process, this ligament, stylohyoid ligament originates and this gets calcified and so the whole styloid process appears to be enlarged. Because this is diagnosed usually on radiograph, x-ray, CT scan and the calcified area and the bone, they look very similar. So we get an impression that the bone is enlarged. But now we know for sure that it's not the enlargement of the bone. In fact, it is calcified, calcification or calcium deposits on this ligament. Right. Now, what is the criteria where you call it enlarged? There has to be certain criteria. Be below this, it is not called enlarged. It's normal size and beyond that is uh, enlarged styloid process. And as you can see, point number two, the criteria is 2.5 centimeter. So in this patient, the styloid process must be more than 2.5 centimeters to be called enlarged styloid process, which is roughly one inch. One inch is roughly 2.4, somewhere about. So, if you say 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters, both are correct answer. Now, what is the problem? So, if you have enlarged styloid process or deposition of calcium of the ligament causing the impression of the start, enlarged styloid process, what is the problem? The problem is, you can see this diagram that this is the styloid process and between the two carotid it is going and the ligament from the styloid process of the hyoid bone, stylohyoid ligament. This ligament gets calcified as I told you. Now, presentation is a throat pain which may be referred to the ear. This is the only complaint. <clears throat> you know, this stylet process I told you is located deep to the tonsil. So, tonsil is in the area of the oropharynx. So, this is a, a oropharyngeal problem basically, and oropharynx is predominantly supplied by the ninth cranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, right? So this uh, enlarged stylet process, it usually irritates this glossopharyngeal nerve, it irritates the nerve and that causes a kind of pain, constant nagging pain in the throat. Because this pain is due to stylet process, the pain is called stylgia. This name is very, very important, stylgia. is a pain due to stylet process. See, styloid process as such is not a problem. We are not bothered about the enlarged styloid process. 2.5 centimeter styloid process doesn't make any difference. But if it causes pain, stylgia is a problem, right? <clears throat> and because the ninth nerve also supplies the middle ear, middle ear is supplied by a branch of the ninth nerve called 
Jacobson's nerve. So same nerve in the oropharynx, same nerve in the middle ear. So there is a referred pain in the ear. Quite often, the only complaint of the patient is earache. The patient will not complain of pain in the throat. Pain will complain ear, complain of earache. So if you have a earache, middle ear pain, and there is no local symptom or local findings, look into the oropharynx. You might have some problems like styloid process. <clears throat> right now, you can see this scan and the arrow marked thing is the thyroid process. You can see the last thyroid process and you can also make out that the upper part of the process is more dense, so it's bony. Lower part, part is less dense because there is deposition of calcium there. Right. Then, <clears throat> uh, before we talk about Ernest's disease, now, uh, thyroid process, you can diagnose like I showed, uh, told you on radiograph, then how do you, what do you do? How do you confirm one, one, one thing is, how do you confirm that the pain the patient is experiencing is due to this thyroid process and nothing else? For that, what we do is, we inject local xylocaine on the base of the tonsil. We go deep, go to the base of the tonsil and inject xylocaine. Because I told you, just deep with the tonsil is the thyroid process and the nerve is getting irritated there. So on injecting xylocaine, if this pain disappears, when he says, this confirms the diagnosis and it will tell us that yes, if you remove the thyroid process, then the pain will disappear. But when you inject xylocaine deep to the tonsil and the pain persists, this tells us that even if you remove the thyroid process, the pain is not going to go away. Stylgia is not going to go I told you stylgia is a problem, isn't it? The pain is bothered about the pain. So the pain is not going to go away, then you don't need to do anything. Then you then the treatment makes no sense. So what is the treatment if you think that you have to do something is you have to cut the styloid process. Obviously in last thyroid process is causing the pain, you cut the styloid process, remove the extra part and that uh, takes care of the pain. But like I told you that styloid process lies deep to the tonsil. So if you want to remove the styloid process, first you have to remove the tonsil, that means you have to do a tonsillectomy followed by excision of the styloid. So this is a treatment, tonsillectomy followed by excision of the styloid process, very very important. The second syndrome that I told you we will talk about very briefly is Ernest syndrome. This one is also slightly important. Now, as you can see, this is a pain at the TM joint area, temporomandibular joint area. And this is either due to damage or weakening of the stylomandibular ligament. In the previous case, stylohyoid ligament, here stylomandibular, from the stylo to the mandible, a ligament comes, which is small but powerful ligament in the skull and it pulls the jaw and all that. So this ligament is damaged or weak and that causes a pain in the area of the TM joint and the pain can be referred to other parts. <clears throat> so there is unexplained continuous pain at the temporomandibular joint and sometimes the patient will not complain of pain in this area because the pain can be referred to the ear, to the neck, to the head, you know. So the patient may complain of pain here, pain in the ear, pain in the temporal area, pain near the orbit because they are referred pain. So one of the things you can do to diagnose is when you uh, elicit the pain, when you palpate this area of the TM joint, ask the patient to open the mouth and then palpate here, it will be tender. So that tells you if this area is tender, then it tells you it is Ernest syndrome. Right, so that's the way of eliciting the pain. Right, now where is the pain referred? You can see this diagram that the pain is in the stylomandibular ligament area, TM joint area, but all these circles you see, these are the areas where the pain can be referred. So it's a very vague kind of a presentation. Pain can be anywhere. I told you in the neck, in the ear, in the temporal area, in the orbit, in the forehead area, anywhere can be the pain. Right. So what you do is, treatment is again, you can do the local anesthetic infiltration of the stylomandibular area or joint area. Or you can uh, do what is called radio frequency neurolysis. Neurolysis means you damage the nerve with radio frequency waves. And if you give these waves pulsed in the pulsed manner, it's called radio frequency pulse. It's nearly the same thing. <clears throat> right. So this is Ernest syndrome that you have to know. And there are three more syndromes. Now, <clears throat> uh, so this is about our syndromes that we have talked talk, talk about. Let me tell you that we are having our free course this is a free course every seven every day 7 pm not every day weekdays monday to friday 7 pm 
it says neat pg 2021 crack ent with dr sanjay agarwal so please join this today's topic today's uh, uh, we every 7 o'clock we have different topics i have just taken a topic on instruments on ent there are four sessions on instruments of ent that session is going on so please join if you want to know about the it's a free session we told you but more important than this we have new courses on an academy one is a regular batch one is a concise batch of ent and one is a ent revision course based on live mcqs as as it tells you <clears throat> right now the regular batch is a 30 hour batch course and starts on the 27th of july and if you use this referral code dr sanjay 10 you get a 10% discount right then the second course is concise course as the name tells you it's a 16 hour course concise course the 16 hour course starts on the 3rd of august again if you use this referral code dr sanjay 10 uh, 10 then you get a 10% discount and the third course is a ent revision course based on mcqs this is a short 5 hour course only starts on the 30th of november again if you use the same dr sanjay 10 then you get 10% discount now this referral code can be used for any course you want to join in an academy the last two course that is concise course and this <coughs> uh mcq course we have combined them together and we give as one package it's called operation ent uh, neat pg 2020 look at this operation neat pg 2020 look at the name that we are going to take care of the neat pg 2021 and in this we have all the 19 subjects all the 19 uh, ent is one of them so so first is like it says that till october if you read the first line till october we are going to teach all the subjects in a concise manner ent starts on the 20 uh, 3rd of uh, uh, 3rd of uh, august and then followed by from october onwards we'll have till december we'll have mcq based uh, classes in ent i'm going to teach only 5 hours starting from 30th of Uh, november right and this course is going to be having like you can see all the subjects ent 16 hours of concise course and 5 hours of mcq mcq based course and this is being taught by all the main faculties you can read the name of the faculty look at the ent i am going to teach you ent 18 years of experience my dear friends so don't miss this right so <clears throat> this is the discount as you can see 10% discount if you want to get Dr. Sanjay Agarwal's ENT, you can join this, right? And that is going to be today. Again, we'll come next week with another syndrome. So we are going a series of syndromes. I'm going to do. So please join next week, same time, roughly at same time, with another syndrome that I'm going to come. With. So thank you, all the best, and this is your ENT educator, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal.